Welcome back to Access All Areas. Matthew Richardson and Damien Barrett with you. And joining us now is Carlton champion Mark Murphy, who's got some good news for us. Uh, the sling's off, Mark. The left shoulder. Yeah, sling's off. Went and saw Craig Hoy this morning. So got that all scanned and showed up pretty well. So I got the, the sling off. So starting to move the left arm around now, which is good. So as that rehab goes, it's two schedule. Yeah, two schedule, which is really good. So they, uh, they forecast about eight weeks in total. So after four out of the sling, um, and now I can get stuck into the rehab side of it. Mark, just, was, sorry, Rich, I just as the yeah. vision comes up, um, <laughs> Dangerfield there got you really solidly, didn't you? Yeah, it was probably a silly contest from both of us, really uh, diving head first into it. But um, yeah, Greg uh, Hoy, the surgeon, said he likened to a car accident, he hadn't really seen too many footy, so uh, did a good job on it. And so you reckon now it's just all about getting the strength and movement back in? Yeah, right? just uh, getting the strength back into it. Obviously, I haven't done anything on it for four weeks. So I've uh, got a little girl's arm at the moment. So I've uh, <laughs> got to get back in the gym and work on that. How much have you it's lost, got, um, lost like by definition and, and, and strength? I've lost a, a fair bit. I'm locking it to Dylan Buckley's arm at the moment. He's obviously a young player at our club and he weighs about 70 kilos. So um, I've lost a fair bit. I've lost about three kilos all up as well. So. Um, but that won't be too hard to put that back on the next couple of weeks. And you convinced yourself in your own mind that you're back playing football for Carlton at some stage this year? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, the scan showed no break. Um, had three fractures in it um, when I did the injury. So, uh, yeah, just strengthen up over the next couple of weeks, start to do some more weights, a bit of running, yep. um, and hopefully back out there in a month's time. Now, you're not one to create too many headlines off the field, but you did uh, when you are watching your team play the other night. And this is the, the tweet you sent out. Uh, in relation to what you felt was some pretty bad umpiring, ruined a good game, those blokes. Now, as we know, yourself and Jeremy Laidler and, and Jared Waite, by extension, who retweeted his wife's tweet on mm. umpiring, have, uh, have copped it a bit. Um, you've apologised to the AFL via the club. Where's yep. that at? Uh, just waiting to hear back today in terms of uh, whether I get fined or suspended fine. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a silly, silly uh, comment by myself. Um, didn't mean it to come out the way that it did. And, um, you know, they don't want it to affect any umpires in, in junior ranks coming through because of, because of comments like that. So hopefully, um, yeah, they don't read too much into that. But, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty stupid from me. And me and Jez and, and Wadey for retweeting his um, Mrs. Tweet. Did you, did you know straight away you, you'd done the wrong thing? I mean, umpires, and I know I've spoken to you in the past about the umpires, I mean, you, you're not one to bag them publicly anyway. Um, you knew you did the wrong thing straight away? Yeah, I am um, pretty good mates with a couple of umpires, both to uh, Jordan Bannister on the weekend. But, um, yeah, it was, a, it was a stupid thing to do. And as soon as I, I, I uh, tweeted, I knew that I was going to be in a bit of a strife. But, um, yeah, so we couldn't go back from there. Once you put it out there, it's, it's already out there. And, and do you want to take your apology any further than what you've, you've done to this point? Oh, I've, I've apologised to the AFL through for the club, so um, yeah, it was a silly comment by myself. Obviously, I haven't done it before and, and uh, won't do it again. Hey Murph, one thing I want to know, from week to week there seems to be different interpretations of rules and the umpiring department probably lets the club know, or they should. Do you guys then get that information so you can adjust your game at all? Uh, it's mainly probably just at the start of the year what, what sort of areas they're focusing on. Week to week we don't really get told, so um, I, th I think they probably have a little focus areas that they look at to try and improve the game. So. But yeah, they don't really pass that on to. I'm not sure if it's a club, but the clubs don't pass it on to us. Well, you're really uncomfortable talking about umpires right now. We'll, we'll take a look it. at some of the incidents that you may have been referring to in that tweet from the other night. Um, Joseph holding the, the ball here, Richard. You take us through it. Um, what, yeah. Why has this been paid against him on this game when it hadn't been previously? Well, look, I have no idea, and we know Murphs can't really talk about it. But for me, Joseph took possession of the ball there as he was going to ground. He didn't dive on the ball that was already on the ground. The ball was straight away out of his hands. Darling's on top of him. We can see Jamison so that's in there. that's a ball there. up in other weeks. That, yeah, yeah, that's a ball up. I yeah. mean, that cannot be holding the ball against Joseph. And this is the Chris Judd 50, which uh, got a lot of Carlton people even more angry than the Doris Joseph decision. Um, what happened here? Well, this is a guy that's copped a tag for most of his career. Yeah, he got a little bit frustrated, but if this is a 50-metre penalty, there's absolutely nothing in that. We're playing a man's game here. Players have emotions on the ground, and every now and then there's going to be a bit of push and shove. And if we're going to start paying 50 for those, I think we've gone too far. Yep. Another one you wanted to have a look at was the, the decision uh, in the GWS game to award uh, Jeremy Cameron a free kick for what Jake well, Batchelor does to him here. Well, how many times do you see this? A backman, yeah, they're annoying, and Jake Batchelor's being annoying there to Jeremy Cameron, but that, that, that's not another free kick, surely. Doc, we, do we really want the game going that far? I don't think so. Would you tweet out about that one, Murph? Or would you no, no, no tweets on that stuff anymore. <laughs> hey, uh, Chris Judd, uh, we just saw him there giving away the 50-metre penalty. He looks a little bit more frustrated than he has been in the past. Richo has questioned his status right now in the immediate time frame that he's not in the elite of the AFL anymore. Where is he at and is he carrying an injury? Uh, I'm not too sure. I haven't been around the club a lot over the last month. I've been doing my own, own rehab uh, stuff at the moment. But um, I think Juddy, by his own admission, would say he's had a, a pretty poor 
sort of month of footy. Um, but to say he's sort of not in that elite category anymore, I reckon, is probably a bit tough. No, but um, he's, I, had a, he's had a few <laughs> tough games. I said chat. right as we speak, uh, yeah, okay. he's not in the top ten, but obviously he's a, a champion player. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're talking about the, the now, but I mean, it's, it's not Chris Judd. I mean, what's happened the past fortnight, and particularly in the match just gone, that, that is not what he's done for his whole career. So are there worries amongst the, the playing group, or even in your eyes? Uh, I don't think there's worries um, in terms of the way we're playing at the moment. The last... Two games, I think, have been really, really good from our point of view. I think everyone's working really hard. Obviously, that Port Adelaide game was a real, real downer for the club. But um, I think the last two weeks, we've responded really well. I think the Geelong game, pretty, pretty stiff not to win that. If we converted better, um, it's always tough to beat West Coast uh, over there. So um, I suppose the next sort of uh, few weeks will tell where we're at when we're playing Hawthorne and Collingwood. Um, so we've got a week to fresh it up now. So whether Juddy's been carrying something, get a, a chance to freshen up and then come back in and uh, put up a good show against Hawthorne. Does he talk to the players um, amongst the team anyway that, about how he's travelling himself or does he uh, keep his distance when it comes to his personal issues, as in personal form issues? Um, oh, he hasn't had to say too much at all really since I've been at the club or when, since he's been at the club in terms of poor form because he hasn't really played too many bad games so um, I don't think Juddy's one to whinge at all but uh, I think he'll, he'll come out the next sort of month of footy and try and put his Best uh, foot forward. Sure. We've got a, a tweet here from Jackson Mark, and he wanted to ask, to ask you how far away is Jared White? I think he's um, starting running and swimming back this week. So he's had a few weeks off. I think he had an epidural just to, to help his back sort of settle down. So um, saw him on Saturday morning. He looked in, in good spirits. So hopefully he's back out there running the next couple of weeks and uh, you know, he's maybe two or three away. I'm not too sure. I think they're just playing it week by week at the yeah. moment. Murph, uh, Sean Hampson didn't play in Perth Thursday night, but if he comes back in, can you play the three tools in the same team at the moment, do you think, especially when Wade comes back? Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see when Wade comes back, um, probably lacking a few tools at the moment, so it's good to have those three that can go uh, down and play forward yeah. for us. But, um, yeah, when Wade comes back, I'm not too sure whether it'll work or not, but um, I think Robbie, Robbie's been in some really good form of late, so it's good to see him start to, uh, to play some good footy. But... Um, yeah, whether you play all the th three with uh, Wade, I'm not too sure. Our Twitter handle is at AFL underscore triple A. Another one has come in from Tony, who wants to know what Mark thinks of Brett Ratton's actions on the boundary line. He's been back on the boundary line coaching in the past couple of weeks, uh, Mark. Um, do the players know where he is, and is it of an issue to them? Um, oh, he's been down there for a few years now. It's good just to, uh, to have a few few words with him when he come off uh, off the grounds to let him out, let him know how things are going out there but um, obviously he shows a, f a fair bit of emotion down there which is good to see. Do you like him showing emotion? There's some people will be observing saying it's too much to be shown by a senior person at the footy club. What's your take on, on that emotion? Oh, I, I, I don't have a, an issue with it at all. I think it's good to see someone um, you know, so passionate about uh, what he's doing so um, yeah, I, I enjoy having him down there and if he celebrates a goal like that I don't don't uh, see it as a bad thing. Yep. Richo said that uh, round 23, the match against St Kilda, will determine whether you make the eight. Is it slipping away from you this season with two really tough matches to come in the next two weeks? Yeah, obviously uh, some pretty big games in the next couple of weeks, um, but it's so tight through that middle uh, tier of the ladder, so um, every game's crucial from now on in, but um, yeah, just to pin it on maybe that, that last game, um, probably a bit far from saying that as yet, but... Uh, you know, we've, we've got to win, obviously, more than what we lose in the next uh, three months of footy, that's for sure. Do you ever glance ahead and have a look at the draw and try and sort of work it out yourself? Or you just... I know we always say week-to-week -week as players, yeah. but do you, you must be tempted to sort of try and work it out. Oh, because I've been injured, I've been looking at yeah. that um, a fair bit to see when I should, should come back in and, and how we're going um, by that stage. But, um, yeah... Not too sure. We've got some, some pretty winnable games towards the latter half of the year, so um, you know, the, obviously the next two weeks are pretty crucial, and then you know, every game is from then on in, but um, yeah, we've got not a bad run leading into finals. Is everyone at the club feeling the pressure right now? It's, it's gone from being expecting and wanting the talk to be a top four finish, and Brett Ratton said that himself, um, to just trying to take it week to week. Are you under pressure? Uh, I think we've just got to control our controllables at the moment. We've had obviously a lot of injuries that have um, hurt where we're at at the moment, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's something you can't really focus too much on the outside pressure. You've got to just keep it all internal and, and focus on, doing the, on getting the process right and hopefully that'll look after it itself and um, you know, turn into wins uh, on the board. Yep. Our IPSM poll, Rich Show, the question we're asking this week is who is the better player, Gary Ablett Senior or Junior? Give us your answer. Oh, I said Gary Ablett Senior for brilliance, but you know, Junior's so consistent, mm. isn't he, Mark? Yeah, he's a, he's a freak. I was probably a little bit too young to, to, uh, to realise how good uh, Senior was, but... Um, 
yeah, Gaz is definitely one of my favourite players going around to watch. Yep, the result of that poll will be on Access All Certainly Areas will. on Friday. Yeah, yeah, Mark Murphy, thanks for joining us on Access All Areas today. And you too, Richard. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Cheers. On Friday's Access All Areas, John Worsfold will be in for a chat with myself. And right now, it's goodbye on Access All Areas.